Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I wanted to come in and run my mouth and talk about some of the people. Now, listen to this. So the other day, you know, we were talking about Drea. You know, Drea done got knocked up um, by that <laughs> by that 22 year old, right? Um, and I misspoke. I said that um, I read somewhere that he had an eight. I think I said eight point nine million dollar contract. Well, I was definitely off with my number. Now, I corrected myself in the description box, but I know some of you don't go to the description box. Um, this is according to Forbes, Forbes.com. This is what they had to say about Jalen's coin. And I said, oh, like, girl, this is a thing. I, I, I'm a man of a particular age. Y'all are, some of you are, uh, are, a woman or a man, non-binary, a person of a particular age. We know how the game go. You know what I'm saying? Drea, she know how the game go. Um, so we all know what Drea is doing, you know? Um, but it says that Green's, um, basically he signed a four-year, $40.8 million contract in 2021. Green is earning just $8.9 million this season. So it's not an $8.9 million contract. It's actually a $40.8 million contract. And this year, um, this season, shall I say, um, he was being paid, he's being paid 8.9 of that 40.8. So, you know, I said that Drea might get about 10 to 15,000. I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up with child support because we know Dre, we know Drea about to uh, catch ghost as soon as she pop out that baby. Um, so we we can go ahead and scoop that up to about thirty, forty <laughs> thousand. <laughs> Dre is still a mess. Don't ever get it twisted. But let me just say this: this is what I had to say the other day on Twitter. Because the thing with me is, I try to be consistent with the things that I say. Everybody can get it. If it's trifling for one, it's trifling for the other. Your your thoughts should not change based off of who the person you may be speaking about. If you feel this way about whatever situation, it you should still feel that way, even if it includes your mama, daddy, sister, brother, best friend, girl, sorority, sister, fraternity, brother, favorite teacher. That's just how you feel, right? Now, of course, if you're speaking about a situation and it pertains to someone who you care about and love, your delivery may be a little bit different. But that's still the way that you feel. So when I when I talk about Drea being trifling for talking about, I mean, for having a baby with a 22 year old, it would be the same way if the roles were reversed and it was a grown man having a baby with a 22 year old. It wouldn't change at all. OK. Um, this is what I had to say on Twitter the other day. I find it effed up that the same ones who will say 15 year old girls are fast and know what they're doing when one of the 28-year-old pervs pounces on them will turn around and call Jalen Green a victim at 22. I'm just saying. Drea is still trifling, though. Yeah. You know how many people out there who will call look Keisha, look Tiffany, look Ashley fast at 15 years old when she's been taken advantage of by some 30-year-old man? She know what she's doing. It was a teacher I saw the other day um who was having inappropriate relationships i think with like five students i think he was a substitute teacher some it was a grown man basically and one of the little girls i think she was like 16 17 said um we we made love and there were people in the comment section saying see she fast what she know about making love you idiot don't you think that the 30 year old man has convinced this girl who's 16 or 17 year old that that's what it is but no, you want to take the blame off of this 30-year-old man, 28 pushing 30, and put it on this 16, 17-year-old girl, when more than likely, that's what he's told her and that's what he has her believing. But y'all want to make the little girls fast and they should know better. But Jalen, who's 22, he's just a little boy who's been taken advantage of. Like I said, Dre's still trifling. But she put that seasoned vintage cat. <laughs> you know, Jalen Jalen probably ain't never had no coochie. <laughs> Girl, like Drea coochie. <laughs> yeah. 
He ain't never had none of that good old Southern. <laughs> that good, I don't know what Dre from. He ain't had none of that good vintage season cat. So, girl, he probably, he probably, girl, Jalen probably be, girl, taking a shower, girl, jacking off thinking about Dre. Girl, she done put that gold wet, wet, that ocean, that Atlantic Ocean cat on him. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Girl, she about to take all that boy money. I know that's right. Anyways, <laughs> Wendy Williams' ex husband, Kevin Hunter, wants um, payback from alimony checks. Um, and cut of her SAG, AFTRA retirement fund. So this is according to the Jasmine brand. So according to recent reports, Kevin Hunter filed a new motion amid his, his ongoing financial struggles, uh, struggles asking the court to hold Williams accountable for the severance pay he claimed to be owed. Reportedly, Kevin Hunter, and another thing too I want to say about Drea, all y'all nukes out there, who girl will, will put Jay-Z on a pedestal when he was going after Beyonce at 19 years old? Yeah, uh-huh. All the ones out there who will still put Russell Wilson on a pedestal after he was going after Kamora when girl, she still probably had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday written across her panties. Girl, y'all shouldn't even be a part of the conversation. Y'all wanna y'all got y'all getting so mad at Dre, but y'all ain't even calling y'all homeboys out. Shut up. Reportedly, Kevin Hunter, 51, says in the filing that he's been cut off from his court ordered support check since 2022. He claims that when he split from, Win uh, from Wendy Williams 59 back in 2019, you mean when, when she split from you? <laughs> okay. Um, she agreed to a severance pay, which, uh, which has not been paid out to him since she was placed under guardianship. If you recall, Wells Fargo... Uh, pushed for guardianship after the daytime TV host was dealing with health, health issues, they claimed that left her vulner, vulnerable uh, to fin financial exploitation. While Williams eventually regained access to her multi-million dollar fortune, Hunter says he still hasn't been given uh, his severance payout, significantly reducing his income. Has she regained access to her multi-million dollar fortune? Because I heard she hasn't. Y'all might want to double check on that. I didn't watch. I didn't watch the Thingamajiggy. What's it called? The documentary. He alleges in recent filing, um, I have not received my severance payments since January of 2022. Um, this <laughs> girl. <laughs> this is an emergent matter because I rely on the severance pay. <laughs> For my living expenses and have been without income for 23 months has a great has affected me greatly. Well, you you got your grown ass as a man sitting over there waiting for this woman to pay. Girl, when I tell you, <sighs> therefore, I re I respectfully request that the court require Wendy to immediately pay all severance payments, which may be due um, at the time of the of this court's order. Listen. Owing, I'm sorry, uh, be, that may be due and owing at the time of this court's order. Girl, I mean, okay, to be fair, I don't know why I'm trying to be fair. If he's owed this money, then I guess it's his money. Did, Sheree, did Sharina ever leave, Kevin? Because, you know, usually, girl, I'm not mad at nobody. Usually, you know, the side chicks turn girlfriends, ask Mia, turn wives, girl. You know, when the money dry up, they gone, which they should, <laughs> okay? But I'm just saying, I don't even know how Sharina even sat over there and girl was okay with letting another woman take care of her, her family, and her baby. Because your family was eating, not because of Kevin, because of Wendy, if we're going to be honest. Your baby was being, yo, you was able to, uh, to buy pampers for your baby and formula for your baby, not because of Kevin, because of Wendy Williams. Don't ever forget it. I'm just saying, we're going to call a thing a thing, we're going to call it, okay? And now Kevin over there, I ain't kind of popped the piss in or winter to throw it out of, over there begging for money. Didn't he sell his house in Florida? And I think he got, I think he got a profit off of his home, right? I feel I feel sorry for Kevin Jr. Because if he ain't got no money and Wendy money on lock, he can't even call his daddy. Girl. This is sad. But girl, okay, so listen to this. Um, Sheree Woodfield uh, raises awareness for dementia as she reveals her mom's recent diagnosis. 
This has been one of the most difficult exper experiences I have en endured. I'm about to say something that's going to sound so insensitive. I think that it is, girl, that's what I'm saying. I, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think that this is what I'll be talking about when it comes to these reality stars. Now, all of a sudden, the girls and boys at NBC Universal Bravo have been trying to get this cast together for season 16 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Some people are saying that the cast is already final and we just don't know. I saw someone, I saw some people saying last week on Twitter that they actually started filming this season already. I don't know, um, but I just find it, you know, it's just the timing of it all that all of a sudden they say that you're filming, they're trying to wrap up, uh, you know, who's going to be on the cast. And now Sheree is coming out, letting us know that her mother has dementia. Quiet as this kept, I thought we already knew that. No tea, no shade. Remember when Sheree's mother like went missing like a, a, a couple of years ago? I thought that we all came to the conclusion that maybe, maybe am I, am I, am I talking too much? I thought maybe I had, <laughs> maybe I had this conversation with a friend. Maybe I didn't have this conversation with y'all. <laughs> you a messy bitch. You can't. You know you talk too much, and you can't remember what you said to who you said it to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I thought we already had this conversation. I thought we already discussed that. We thought that like the mother, because remember she went. Miss Dama went missing a couple of years ago, and I thought we all came to the conclusion that's that's what it was. It was never just, you know, it was never confirmed, but I think we all kind of were like, oh. So I think when I saw this story today, I was like, I thought we already knew this. But now Sheree is trying to shape up a storyline if she comes back for season 16. I mean, girl, if that's what's going on in Sheree's world, that's what's going on, going on, going on in Sheree's world. The 50 year old, the 54 year old made a post on Instagram today, March the 12th, to open up about her mother. Her mother's Thelma Ferguson diagnosis uh, has impacted the entire family. Um, hey, booze. I know I have been. I, I know I have not been as active on social media like I usually do. I have been dealing with a lot, and I wish I had better news to share at this time. Um, but I just wanted to come on here and to update y'all and bring awareness to a cause that is near and dear to my heart. Um, as many, um, as many. I'm sorry, as many of you know, my father passed away last March due to, to, due to Alzheimer's. Um, it saddens me that one year anniversary of my father's death and this disease is also affecting another very close family member, my mom. This has been one of the most difficult experiences I have ever endured, especially going through this with close family members back to back and feeling helpless like there's nothing I can do but try to make them as comfortable as possible when, of course, that's not enough. Um, in the caption post, the Ohio native also expressed appreciation for caregivers who look after loved ones with dementia. Um, I have tons of questions. I'm open to learning more about the disease. If any caregiver, caregivers, caretakers can drop helpful tips that can possibly help me or anyone regarding uh, reading this with a loved one that is uh, in the beginning stages of dementia and is resistance to help, this will be greatly appreciated. You know, it's a sad situation. I hope, you know, I've never been a caretaker before. One thing I do want to do is give a shout out to all the caretakers out there. I know that could be stressful. Uh, my grandmother, when she was here, uh, she was a caretaker for her mother and also her brothers and sisters. This is when I was in middle, no, I think I was in high school. Um, there were caretakers for their mother. Um, and I just remember hearing, uh, you know, just you just know how stuff can be stressful. So sh one, uh, shout out to all the caretakers. Um, and then two, I just hope, you know, all messiness aside, I hope that Sheree is getting the assistance, the help that she needs, because I know it could just be a stressful situation. I, I, I mean, I can try to put my shoes, I mean, myself in, you know, someone's shoes, but it'll never be like wearing them. Um, so I hope Sheree is okay. I hope her family is okay. And I hope Miss Thelma is doing the best that she can do. Um, that was it on that. So yeah, shout out to Miss Thelma. You know what I wanted to talk about? 
Congrats, Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay wins iHeartRadio for Best Sports Podcast. Now, we're going to have to call a thing a thing. I don't really watch Club Shay Shay like, Club Shay Shay like that, but is Club Shay Shay a sports podcast? Now, 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 y'all doing like y'all did, Carisha, please. Remember, Carisha had about two and a half episodes. And she started winning awards for best podcast. And I think everybody was like, hold on. How you winning awards? Girl, you just came out with your podcast. And she was winning awards over, like, I think the show with Noriega. Um, it was some other podcasts that I will say, based off of what I've heard, should have won over Carisha, please. So all I'm trying to say is we're going to keep the same energy for Club Shay Shay. How in the hell is Club Shay Shay out here winning Best sports podcast when, girl, the clips that I see and the people that I see on his show ain't got nothing to do with sports. Girl, I done seen Monique. I done seen Cat Williams. I done seen Country Wayne. I done seen the other comedian. Girl, girl, is it really a sports podcast? It's like the other day, I think Beyonce won Best r and <laughs> I think it was at the People's Trust Awards. It was some award show. And I was like, girl, how did Beyonce wear R&B for Renaissance? We're going to have to stop giving awards out just because you like people. It's no shame. Okay? Anyways, y'all. That's all I had to say. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. <laughs> did y'all see, see Shannon getting out that truck the other day with that green with that green get up, girl? And his, his man bag was girl thrown across his shoulder. I thought, no, that's right. <laughs> Girl, when Shannon got up out that got up out that car and was tugging on them clothes. <laughs> oh! Anyways, I'm gone, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. I have a good day. Bye, y'all.